were being gaslit by the mainstream media and I thought I'd bring it to your attention because I heard a YouTuber that I really trust give some inside information on this case recently. She said she wasn't going to say any more and I decided I'd show you the clip today. You know, being the artist that I am um, at Sony, I, I've, I've generated several billion dollars for Sony. Several billion. I'm not supposed to say what I'm going to say right now, but I, I have to let you in on a secret. Say it. So, uh, please don't videotape what I'm going to say, okay? <laughs> Turn that off, please. What I'm talking about is the P. Diddy controversy that's going right on right now. We've all been seeing the headlines that P. Diddy's house got raided in like a military style fashion. So one of my favorite podcasters here on YouTube is someone named Candace Owens. But she reported on a story regarding Michael Jackson and P. Diddy. And I actually believe that this raid that happened on Puffy's house, there's a lot more to do with the story. So the sh picture I'm showing right now is an article that was in the AP this morning. Essentially, Puffy is saying that his house was raided unfairly. If you don't know who Candace Owens is, I'll uh, link her channel afterwards. Like I said, she's one of my favorite YouTubers. All right, so I wasn't kidding at the top, guys. I am probably not going to cover this anymore because it is definitely getting a bit terrifying. The Diddy lawsuit is absolutely crazy. Full stop. What if I told you guys that it is about to get even crazier, that there is directly a link to Michael Jackson's death? And I want to be clear that when everything was going on with Michael Jackson, the lawsuits, his death, I thought that we were in full conspiracy theory territory when people were saying that Michael Jackson was killed. I actually know a lot of people that are in the industry who believe that Michael Jackson was killed, and I just thought... It just sounds too too whacked out to believe that somebody intentionally killed Michael Jackson. Of course, why would they do that? And also, I was believing the media that even though he factually won his case, I allowed my image of Michael Jackson certainly to be corroded by the media throughout that time period. I will fully confess that. Now, I want to remind you before we get back into Michael Jackson, what we learned in the Diddy documents, just to very quickly recap. Well, uh, if you read through them again, these are all allegations, but you will come out of it understanding that there is allegedly some sort of a blackmail ring that is operating throughout. I'm going to stop right there. Uh, prompted, I believe, prompted this video. Um, when Michael Jackson was accused of all of those things in the 90s, right before that happened, when he was at the pinnacle of his career, when he had the most power, when he had the most fame, when he was still in his prime, he put out an announcement that has been wiped from the internet, which recently came to light. Yeah. And Tommy Matola is a devil. Say it. So, uh, please don't videotape what I'm going to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mariah Carey. After divorcing Tommy, came to me crying. Crying. She was crying so badly I had to hold her. And she said to me that this is an evil man. And Michael, this man follows me, she said. He taps her phones. And he's very, very evil. And she doesn't trust him. And he is a horrible human being. And we, we have to continue our drive until he's terminated. Oh! There you go! And she had nobody to stand up for her. So Michael Jackson stood up for her. And that's when all of these allegations went down and he started getting accused of these things. Hollywood and that artists that are producing music are actually being controlled uh, via being induced into drugs at parties. And then what takes place is they're being recorded and sometimes they're being recorded while they are in committing sexual acts with minors. And something that we also saw in these docs is that these parties, at least a lot of them, are taking place in the Virgin Islands, which again, 
just makes you go, what's happening here? Because Jeffrey Epstein, obviously his home or he owned an island uh, that was just off the coast of St. Thomas. So we hear that again. I also been jogging your memory about the Bitcoin uh, millionaire who right before his death found drowned, accidental drowning, even though he was fully clothed and had his wallet in his pocket, tweeted that the CIA and the Mossad were running a blackmail ring in the Virgin Islands. Something else that we learned in the daily lawsuit was that the media and the authorities are complicit. So the ring has real power, not imagined power. Again, I am using the word alleged because this person, despite having, uh, you know, video evidence and had, he has presented photographic evidence, this has not yet gone through the court system. And so we can't say that it's entirely true. And I'd say the biggest point that we took away from these Diddy Docs was that this ring, if you believe it exists, can and will murder people to protect themselves. And he intimated this event that happened allegedly at a recording studio where Diddy and his son allegedly shot someone and it was covered up by the LAPD and then the media. All right. So within those docs, and this is where it gets relevant, there is one man that is named as being the person that can do the cleanups, right? This is the guy that you are supposed to call if you get into any sort of a scenario. So in these docs, it says, Mr. Combs instructs his staff to always contact Mr. Muhammad, that is Fahim Muhammad, if they are ever pulled over by the police in Miami or California. And upon information and belief, this is regarding the shooting that took place at Chalice Recording Studios. Again, he is alleging that Diddy and his son shot someone and after that shooting, the documents say explicitly that Mr. Muhammad spoke with the LAPD after G was shot at the recording studio. So just remember that name, Muhammad, Mr. Muhammad, okay? The LAPD was in the recording studio and witnessed the blood in the restroom. And they went with the bogus claim that the shooting of G occurred outside the studio. This was all thanks to Mr. Muhammad's connections within law enforcement. So again, what we are seeing there is that you call this guy and this guy will make it disappear and the media will report whatever the incident is in a capacity that covers up the crime, allegedly. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? The cleanup guy, Mr. Fahim Muhammad, was also on the scene when Michael Jackson died. So I want to introduce you to and allow you to listen to Ian Carroll. He's an independent journalist that is investigating everything that is going on. And he explains that connection that Fahim has with Michael Jackson. Take a listen. So this new lawsuit just came out that shows tons of evidence that P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, has been running a sexual blackmail operation very much like Jeffrey Epstein, but in the rap and music industry for basically 30 years. Okay, and so just to build on Chalk's comment right there, bodyguard, not only bodyguard, but the head of security for the King of Pop, a 22 year old who just got out of college is very messed up. Same same guy as in Puffy's shooting incident. And in that lawsuit, we learned that his head of security while he's running the sexual blackmail ring is this guy named Fahim Muhammad, who before working for Diddy, was the head of security for Michael Jackson when he was only 21. And he was one of the first people on the scene when Michael Jackson died. And before we go to Michael Jackson, the most important part of the Diddy case to bring across is the fact that the record executives at the very top knew what P. Diddy was doing. They were attending the parties with underage girls where they were spiking drinks. They were deeply involved in Diddy's personal life and all evidence points to them supporting his operation or at the very least, turning a blind eye to it. So yes, this is obviously huge. It's also potentially terrifying. And now if you want to be rational and use rational side of your brain, you just go, okay, well, this could just be a coincidence, right? Like Fahim Muhammad, he is in security. And yes, he obviously uh, is high up in security. He was providing security to Michael Jackson. He happened to die on his watch. Big deal, right? Big deal. Well, I think that would lead us to the question of who exactly is Fahim. Okay, so remember, I mentioned Tommy Matola in the beginning of this and the video that came out that has recently resurfaced on TikTok of Michael Jackson calling out Tommy Matola for stalking Mariah Carey and basically trying to take her down, allegedly. 
Muhammad, because that's kind of a, a big first job to have. You're 21 years old and you're protecting the king of pop. What exactly are his qualifications? Let's go back to Ian Carroll and his reporting. And now here's the best part. Check this out. In, this is in all of his bios, by the way, but we're pointing it out now. In 2008, Fahim graduated from Sacramento State University with a bachelor's of science degree in business administration with a concentration in real estate and marketing. Okay. Do you realize what's wrong with that yet? Anything coming to mind? When did Michael Jackson die? June 25th, 2009. Jackson died from cardiac arrest caused by a propofol and benzodiazepine overdose caused by his doctor, apparently. Um, hold up, hold the phone, pause. Why is a dude who just graduated college last year with a business and real estate degree, the head of security for the king of pop, for Michael Jackson, the most famous musician of all time? Yeah, that is Okay, they just explained the how. Now, here's the why. Remarkably suspicious. And if we had a media that was interested in actually presenting the truth and not just propagandizing on behalf of the state, they would probably explore and look deeper into who this character is. But of course, that's not what the media does. Instead, they are meant to convince people of certain narratives. And like I said in the past, I've been a victim to that. I was obviously very young when everything was going on with Michael Jackson, and I believed the media which is why I was kind of stunned to kind of go back and revisit the Michael Jackson case. And Ian has extensively unpacked that revealing, and I did not know this, maybe perhaps because the media wasn't interested in telling us the end result. But yes, the FBI raided Michael Jackson's home. They poured through hours upon hours of the video footage that he had, other materials, documents that were in his house, uh, trying to find this connection uh, to Michael Jackson and potential child abuse. And what ended up being the result was that they could not find a single shred of proof that Michael Jackson had abused any children. And yet despite this, the media convinced us that he was a pedophile, or maybe they didn't convince you, but they definitely did a good job convincing me that Michael Jackson was a pedophile. And to be clear, maybe it's perhaps the lack of evidence that was ever uncovered, Michael Jackson was found not guilty of all of the charges that were brought against him. I'll take a listen. But when you look into those allegations or those insults, you realize that because of his will that was probably fake and filed right before his death. Okay, so here is the motive, you guys. If you don't know what happened with Michael Jackson's will, it's because the mainstream media is not reporting on it. The Jackson family, they pushed back against this, but I, I don't hear them speaking out. They must be petrified too. Just listen to this. So the will was signed on July 7th in Los Angeles by three witnesses but jackson's family pointed out that he was in new york that day and there's video proving it so they changed their story but the witnesses definitely saw it and it was just in new york so anyways because of this will john bronca was put in charge of his estate which included his net worth of 230 million but far more importantly his 50 percent share of sony atv worth 750 million yes he was taking on sony he was going after the hand that feeds him and when you look into John Bronca, in 2003, Jackson fired Bronca because he was siphoning money out of Jackson's accounts in collusion with Sony Music CEO Tommy Mottola and funneling it through a bunch of offshore accounts in the Caribbean. I've got Candace's handle at the bottom, but check out the whole video. It's, it's about 45 minutes long, and she does go into more detail. So before I came on, I just wanted to see what the headlines were as far as the Diddy case before I showed you this Candace video. And all of the headlines are from um, Diddy's lawyer this morning. And they're, the narrative that they're pushing back is that uh, Sean Diddy Combs lawyer says raids of the rapper home were excessive use of military force. So that's what they're labeling it as. And let's just say if they're looking at a 20 year old S SA case, well, maybe it would be excessive, but I just showed you they might be looking for a, a lot of other things there. So let's let's just read this very it's it's literally like one paragraph long. Let me just read this to you. 
Okay, so Los Angeles AP. Sean Diddy Combs' lawyer said Tuesday that all searches for the rapper's Los Angeles and Miami properties by federal authorities in the sex trafficking investigation were gross use of military level force and that Combs is innocent and will be continue to fight to, this, to clear his name. In his first public statement from the music moguls team since Monday's raids of his home by Homeland Security investigative agents, yesterday there was a gross overuse of military level force such as warrants were uh, executed at Mr. Combs' residences, said the statement from his attorney, Aaron Dyer. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and the hostile um, ex and the hostility exhibited by authorities um, or the way his children or employees were treated. And if you haven't seen, they, they basically cuffed and pulled them out. They didn't want anyone to hide anything. And if you haven't seen this home, my God, go look at the pictures. I mean, it's, it's like three of our white houses put together. It's just incredible. The, search, the searches were part of um, an ongoing sex trafficking investigation by federal authorities in New York. Two law enforcement officials told the Associated Press these officials were not uh, the officials were not authorized to publicly discuss details of the investigation and spoke with AP on condition of anonymity. And here's a picture of one of those Hollywood tour buses going by Diddy's house. Combs was not detained and spoke with authorities and neither he nor his family members were arrested nor his uh, travel restricted according to Dyer Siemens. Dyer said the, in, the um, unprecedented ambush has led to premature rush to judgment on Mr. Combs, and nothing is more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations by civil lawsuits. That's what the mink said before. Oh, no, I believe that's Fox. I believe that's Fox you have dead on you. There is There has been no findings of criminal or civil liability with any of the allegations said Dyer said. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Combs' son, Justin, and Christian King Combs were handcuffed during the raid in their father's, in their father's, father's residence in Los Angeles. King, 25, is a music artist whose, whose song, Can't Stop Me, Won't, uh, Can't Stop, Won't Stop, with Kodiak Black, topped Billboard's mainstream R&B hip-hop charts in 2022. Law enforcement conducted the raid Monday on Combs' multi-million dollar mansion in the affluent Hombly Hills neighborhood in Los Angeles and his Miami waterfront home. Along with heavy presence of officers, command trucks were parked outside both properties. The criminal investigation is a major escalation in the scrutiny of Combs, who has been defended in several sexual abuse lawsuits in recent months. In a lawsuit Combs settled the day after it was filed in November, his former, um, his former girlfriend, R&B singer Cassie, sued him for alleged years of sexual abuse, including rape, uh, and uh, the lawsuit said it forced him to have sex, forced her to have sex with male prostitutes while he filmed them. And I'm going to stop there. She filed her, she had the receipts too. And she, allegedly, allegedly. And she filed the lawsuit on November 16th. So, you know, just several months ago, they settled the lawsuit on the 17th. Like no fighting, nothing. They were prepared. They knew it was coming and she knew what she was doing. And I'm going to, um, what's interesting is we have this raid. It's not like the mainstream media has been not covering the case against Cassie. It is definitely being swept under the rug. It is, let me just pull this video up. And it just gives a little idea of what Cassie went through. We're going to go until they explain. And when you have somebody's career and basically life in your hands and they'll do anything for you, that's not consent. That is not consent. That's an abuse of power. Just absolutely horrific. These cases are gross. I mean, and they're hard to, they're hard to listen to, honestly. And especially when uh, a young woman, and if 37, you're still young, uh, gets on the stand and you tell uh, the jury how this has affected you over the last 20 years, th that's powerful. That's absolutely powerful material. When we go to the club, we used to have these bottles, right? And on this bottle, they'd be, they'd be regular Moet bottles. On them bottles right there, they'd been to have something to make the girls be real, real slippery and all of this kind of stuff. We have bottles for us and bottles for them. First of all, you're drugging somebody without their consent or knowledge. That's a, that's a major physical assault right there, just right there. How bad does it look that Diddy's flying a 17-year-old girl on a private jet 
She's on his lap in these photos. She's corroborated by the photographic evidence. My guess is there's going to be other evidence that's going to corroborate her story as well. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for truth. Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what'd he do? And he's gonna react to all the self-snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another fun-filled episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, your board-certified criminal defense lawyer. Today, we're reacting to the news about P. Diddy getting sued. And as a result of a new law, well, relatively new, and it's occurring around the country, we'll talk a little bit more about what that law is and the allegations facing P. Diddy. Now, let's talk about P. Diddy. Okay, first of all, he had one gal that, uh, that he was, that had sued him. And then he, and we'll talk a little bit about more of the specifics, but then he, the minute she filed, um, he, he settled with her the very next day. Well, shortly after that, and I'll give you a timeline of all this. Three more accusers have come, uh, forward to allege sexual assault allegations against P Diddy. And then he came out and gave a statement. Well, and a lot of these allegations are over 30 years old. And so you're thinking to yourself, what the hell, how can you sue somebody if it's that old? Isn't there a statute of limitations? Yes, there is, but there is this new law that's um, that is almost universal. There's it's in every state. We have it here in Minnesota. It's called the Adult Survivors Act, and what it is basically, it's a look a one year look back period. So for one year, you can uh, if you're an adult and you were an adult at the time or or close to it, you can sue your perpetrator, you know, the one you're accusing of sexual assault, regardless of any timeline. It's sunsets, so you only have a year to do this. And it's to kind of clear up a lot of old cases uh, to give people redress that may not have had either the courage or the wherewithal or just the ability to bring a lawsuit, you know, and the statute of limitations may have, have run at that point. So you have the ability, uh, and it was sunsetting. So that is the reason I think that you had all these things come out uh, and about. Let's talk about who filed the first complaint. His ex, Cassie, filed a bombshell lawsuit against him, alleging that, that he a sex trafficked her and raped her over the course of an abuse of 10 years. She filed it on November 16th. On the 17th, they settled. What does that tell you? Let me tell you what that tells you about that lawsuit. It tells you that they you know, were putting her off, putting her off, putting her off, Hoping by uh, hook and by crook, she was not going to observe the statute of limitations. The sunset period would happen and she wouldn't be able to serve it. But guess what? She wasn't stupid. So she had her lawyers file it and the very next day they settled. Now, the amount that they settled for is confidential and, you know, they don't have to tell us. But suffice it to say, it was significant. So on the 16th of November of this year, Cassie accused him of rape, sexual assault, or sex trafficking, and domestic violence. I don't know if the domestic violence falls under that category, um, but in any event, it's the allegation that stemmed from 2018. And like I said, on the 17th, they resolved it, and it says, I have decided to resolve this matter amicably on terms that I have some level of control. She also said, I want to thank my family, fans, and lawyers for their unwavering support. How do you settle nasty allegations of sexual and domestic assault amicably? I mean, fucking it. How do you do that? You don't. You don't do that. Um, but guess what? Right. A week, not even a week later, Diddy is accused of sexual assault by another woman. She accused Diddy of drugging and raping her when she was in college, a student at Syracuse University in 1991. You know, here's one of the things I don't like about these laws is that so much time has passed, like 32 years has passed. And, you know, okay, how am I going to get any 
documents? How am I going to get any witnesses? I mean, that's a long, long time. Attorneys for JD claim she was the victim of revenge porn after Diddy allegedly recorded the incident and shared the tape with others. I mean, I feel like you could prove that after 20 years. <laughs> the last minute law, and this is a statement from a spokesperson for Diddy. The last minute lawsuit is an example of how a well-intentioned law can be turned on its head. JD, the 32-year-old story is made up and not credible. Mr. Combs never assaulted her, and she implicates companies that did not exist. This is purely a money grab and nothing more, a spokesman for the rapper said. Okay, well, if that wasn't bad enough, so you got two people. And all of a sudden, the same day, Diddy faces a third sexual lawsuit against Jane Doe, alleging that Diddy and Aaron Hall took turns uh, raping her and a friend in New York City more than 30 years ago. In response to that allegation, these are fabricated claims falsely alleging misconduct from over 30 years ago and filed at the last minute. There's nothing but a money grab because of Mr. Combs' fame and success. He is an easy target for anonymous accusers who lie without conscience or consequence for financial benefit. Now, here's the deal. Think about that, though. That is true in the sense I've, you know, these guys who have money, um, fame and whatever, um, are targets. If you have something like them implicating, you know, corporations that didn't exist at the time and say this happened here or where and you and you've got details that are very fuzzy, that go that bodes well for Diddy. But here's the thing, he still has to defend these. You know, how do you how do you prove you didn't do something? You know, like okay, you drove to work today, right? Okay, uh prove to me you didn't speed. It's almost impossible. You know, I mean, I suppose you could get the tower records. You could see, you know, calculate. But I mean, in the old world, you know, how do you prove? Uh, how do you prove you you didn't slap me in the face? You know, you it's difficult to disprove a negative. You know what I think? So not what I think. But what prompted all of this? And I think pretty much everyone agrees is Jaguar, right? And I definitely want to show you the updates on Diddy. But if you don't know who Jaguar Wright is, you need to look this woman up. I actually want to show you some of Jaguar. If you don't know this story, this is one witness who's living. She's sane. She's amazing. Real life. Real life. Real life street stars. You know what time it is. At fucker. Mm. I'm sorry. I'm a little yeah. upset about it. Um, because Al B. Shore just came out of his coma. Definitely. Yeah. Um, but when you think about Kim, I was thinking to myself the other day, Uptown Records started with five people. Andre Harrell, Al B. Shore, Heavy D, and Puffy, and Kim, was the longest working employee because she was there from the very beginning. She was Andre's personal assistant. Mm. Kim is dead. Heavy D is dead. Yeah. Andre Harrell is dead. The only two left are Puffy and Al, and Al almost died. Isn't that interesting? That is interesting. Heavy D was found dead face down in the heart attack. Andre Harrell, heart attack. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia-like symptoms. And then right after that, Al had a meeting and I was going to meet up with him because we were in Vegas. And then the next thing you know, you want to know what they all had in common, though? The survivors and the, and, and the late of Uptown Records, they were all writing tell-all books. And don't Andre forget was writing a book right before he died. And don't forget Puff. Um, hold on. Heavy D was working on a book before he and i know we're not tying biggie into all of this just yet 
but Biggie, don't forget, was about to start his own label because he just did Life After Death with Puffy. And he was about to release another album under his own name. He died. Kim Porter was working on a book before she died. And I'll be sure was working on the documentary of his life. And then he goes into a coma. He must be the luckiest motherfucker because it seems like everybody that worked at Uptown Records from the very beginning is gone. Just him. I guess Al disappointed you. You know, it's... I speak for a reason. When you see this bullshit-ass motherfucking game fucking with people that you love, that you like, you know, that you... It's too many coincidences. Too many. You we fuck you, friends. honey, Holmes. Nope. <laughs> Stamp it. We gonna get you and your little dog too. Mm. And congratulations, young Miami. <laughs> Run as fast as Cassie did. <laughs> right? Has anybody asked they self about that shit? I mean, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are asking about <laughs> what's, what's going on with it. <laughs> Is yeah, a lot of people are looking at it like that's the way the new relationship should work. What, uh, to get paid? Yeah, she was getting 500K a month. She quit because he, he dropped her down. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where they're at with it now. No, but understand this. Think about this. And there are women in this room. Why would you quit? What the fuck is going on that 250000 ain't enough? Ladies, like fuck the fact that, that that he, I'm just saying, fuck the fact that he cut it from 500 to 200. Who the fuck gives a shit? 200k, who 250k, who turning down 250k a month? Mm. What the fuck is going on in that relationship that 250k ain't enough? Cause see some things, cause see some things. That ain't worth 250k. That's got to be some dark shit. Mm. Dark. Like people are not understanding that that girl quit. 250k mm. four million every quarter well i'm sorry a million every quarter <laughs> she says she wanted to show people what was on inside of her and she spilled the beans and just go check her out i think she's fascinating go check out candace owens and so i i can't believe i've already spent 45 minutes talking about this but it's a true crime case that i feel i know well enough to actually talk about